Hi everyone, I'm Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands. And you know something that just never gets old? Something that people love asking you when you move abroad and the locals just want to know one thing. They want to know how it's going with you. What do you think of their country? I kid you not, I get this question every single time almost. Okay, every single time, you know, nothing ever happens all the time. But quite often when I meet someone for the first time, they'll ask me, oh my God, so you live in the Netherlands. What is that like? So it's, it's understandable, of course, Dutch folks want to know what you think of their country as an outsider. It's probably the reason you watch my videos. Anyway, the thing that I wanted to talk to you about today were the things that I just still don't get after two and a half years of living in the Netherlands. Now these things aren't huge things, but they are things that I, you know, wonder about. And I also wonder if Dutch folks think about this because they stand out to me. So one of those times when someone asked me, you know, what I thought of the Netherlands, I, I did stop to think, well, you know, there are some questions that I have. And as an American living in the US, I probably don't look at my own culture and my own language, for instance, in the same way. So hope you enjoyed this video on things that I've noticed as an American in the Netherlands about things that I just don't get. Starting with number one, the Oma feats. So folks in the Netherlands love to bike. There were bikes and people. It's just a thing. It's part of the life here. Embrace it. I didn't know how to bike properly until I moved to the Netherlands and now I bike everywhere and now I love my bike and it's a really great relationship that continues to grow and flourish between me and the bicycle. I never thought these words would be coming out of my mouth, but now I'm a huge fan of my Oma feats. Um, I had to get an Oma feats because I wanted a bike that looked Dutch. Like I was all in. Didn't matter that I didn't use back brakes before because the Oma Fitza typically just have back brakes. They don't have front brakes. Like the really, really like traditional, simple bear kind. And you also sit up straight on them. Love the Oma Fitz. But why, why on earth is it called an Oma Fitz? I have never seen an Oma, which means grandma in Dutch, on an Oma Fitz. I have only seen people my age on an Oma Fitz. I've maybe, once or twice seen an older person, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense because, well, wouldn't you expect grandmas to be using a grandma bike? I don't, I don't get it. And if you are Dutch, do you get it? Moving on to thing number two, the Dutch are obsessed with their Oma pizza, but there are other things that the Dutch folk seem to really, really like that I don't quite get. And they're like, specific obsessions. So the next couple of things that I'm going to talk about have to do with that. So let's start with a, a really random one. And I've been wondering about this lately because um, as some of you might know, I just moved, but you know, combine this moving process with me watching Dutch TV. I've come to realize that Dutch folks are obsessed with a specific type of home. And I'm not just talking about like old homes. Cause I get that, you know, I, love living in the Netherlands because even if I don't live in an old place, this apartment also happens to be old with a lot of uh, old problems, but that's for another video. But um, yeah, I moved and then I really liked that even if I thought, well, I'm not going to live in an old apartment probably, or if I do great, but at least I get to see these beautiful old buildings and I really enjoy that. But, but, but why is every Dutch person obsessed with the Jara Dertog house? That is something I really don't get it. These are the homes or like apartments, buildings that were built in the thirties. They're buildings that are built before then. And if you are a lover of old homes, then you, you could love those buildings too. But really there is this obsession for this specific type of home that I just don't get. I mean, it's nice, but so are the other old homes and the new ones are cool too. Like I've been to Rotterdam now plenty of times cool new buildings. There's a lot of great architecture in the Netherlands. I don't get this obsession with this one specific type of home. Like you'll never hear a Dutch person say, oh my God, I really want a Jadatien home. Like a house that was built between, I don't know, 1910 and 1920. So in the teens, in the 1900s. Like you'll never hear that. But I watched this show, <laughs> very Dutch. Uh, well, there's also an American version, so I shouldn't say that. But the show is called Kopen zonder Kijken, like buying without actually having seen the home. It's a great, great TV. It's also made in a very Dutch way. I, if you don't watch it, I recommend you do. But if you're Dutch, chances are you already watch it. 
but on this program, you really see people going crazy for this like yada dare to home. And they don't just say, oh, I want an old home. Sometimes they do, but often they'll just name this like very specific house. Just saying something I don't get, but it is definitely a cultural phenomenon. Number three that I wanted to talk about is also a Dutch obsession. And this is going to be one of two food items that I talk about in today's list. And of course, I have to mention licorice because I don't get the Dutch obsession with licorice. It's one thing if some people in the Netherlands like licorice, but it is so important here in the Netherlands. Like it is a big part of Dutch culture. And if you don't believe me, the Dutch consume the most licorice in the world, like more than four pounds a person per year. That's a lot. And also it baffles me that the Dutch licorice, which is salty in nature, is what the Dutch folks prefer because it's not like they don't like sweet things. I mean, they love putting hagelslag on bread for breakfast, but that's something I get. <laughs> like who doesn't want chocolate sprinkles on their bread for breakfast or lunch or just whenever? Like there's never a bad time for chocolate sprinkles here in the Netherlands. But drop, I don't get. Oh yeah, the Dutch word for licorice is drop. I don't think I said that already. But if you go to a supermarket, you will learn that word pretty quickly because there is a lot of drop to be found in the candy section. I used to think I wasn't a picky eater until I moved to the Netherlands because I don't like raisins. But in the US, you hardly come across raisins because it's really one of those things that as an American, you could like or dislike. So often people choose to leave it out just to be safe. But here in the Netherlands, raisins everywhere, and then there's drop. So I feel like I've always been picky when people have these like snacks around. I'm like, oh no, I don't like that. And I don't like this. I mean, but it's drop. Luckily, Dutch folks realize that outside of the Netherlands, it's not everyone's cup of tea. But here in the Netherlands, it's loved so much that you can actually make a cup of tea of licorice. On a related note, I've noticed that Dutch folks seem to be obsessed with this other food item, namely peanut butter. Now that I get a bit more because peanut butter is delicious, but I don't get the amount of peanut butter Dutch folks seem to consume. Like to the point where, you know, in the US, Americans are famous for having these huge cereal aisles. People make fun of them all the time. Like, and I've always heard this from internationals in the US that the cereal aisles of the US are just like filled with cereal and people freeze in the cereal aisle because there's just too much to choose from and they don't know what they should pick. So that's like, an American problem. I had that problem here in the Netherlands with peanut butter. There's just so many varieties to choose from. And I don't get that because there, I mean, there's drop that you'll see everywhere in the supermarkets and then there's peanut butter. Again, it's delicious, but it just seems to be that Dutch folks have chosen this food item kind of randomly, but they eat a lot of peanut butter here. Hello everyone, this is Editing Ava. What the Ava in the video forgot to tell you is that the Dutch obsession with peanut butter extends so far that there are actually full stores dedicated to peanut butter in the Netherlands. Yes, you can go get your peanut butter here at the Pindakaswinkel. See, told you, Dutch folks seem to be obsessed with peanut butter. Also, another thing I wonder about, why is it called peanut cheese in Dutch? Pindakas. Pinda being peanut, kas being cheese. I understand that peanut butter is also equally weird, but then why peanut cheese? It's, it seems even more far removed. Moving right along, this particular thing that I don't get actually affects my life because, well, you'll see in just a moment, Dutch folks are obsessed with being sporty and active all the time. And when they go on holiday, they also wanna be sporty and active and holidays should be sporty and active and they like going camping and they like roughing it. Why? I don't understand. My girlfriend is the exact same way because she is Dutch and she loves to camp and she loves being active and sporty. And on holidays, we have to be active and sporty. And I am like, where's the wine? I find this so interesting because every time we go on holiday, we have to kind of find a good balance because she does enjoy being active and sporty. And I am just not a sporty person. I am active. I, I don't just sit around and I'm not the type of person to drive my car everywhere. Not saying that's a bad thing. It's just not something that I do because I don't have a license. So that's a different story, but I, I am pretty active in my everyday life. It's not like I'm a 
lump. But yeah, Dutch folk just love these extreme things. Like there is the Elfstede talks where if it freezes and then they like to skate in the freezing cold through 11 cities, like this, this is such a Dutch thing. Or they really love biking everywhere, like not just, you know, commuting biking, but also like sporty biking. And then I mentioned the camping and it's a lot. This item on the list has to do with a beloved and popular Dutch holiday. King's Day, formerly known as Queen's Day, when the Netherlands had a queen who retired. Isn't that lovely? But now it's King's Day, and King's Day is a time to celebrate. Dutch folks have off, everyone is partying. We're really excited this year that we can celebrate King's Day. We haven't been able to, to we, look at that, look at me really integrating. But the Dutch folk haven't been able to celebrate King's Day to its fullest for the last couple of years, so this is an exciting moment. You know something I don't get about King's Day? No, not the monarchy, although monarchies. Um, no, not the fact that you're celebrating the king's birthday. I love a holiday. I get it. It's fine. It all happens. But on King's Day, besides the partying and all the tombush eating that happens, one of the things that also happens is that there are lots of flea markets everywhere, just on King's Day. Normally, you are not allowed to have flea markets outside your house. You don't typically see garage sale signs around, but on King's Day, you're allowed to. And needless to say, I don't get it. What is the relationship between this king and his birthday and flea markets? Why? And literally everywhere, there are gonna be flea markets, kids are selling things, people are selling things, and it's a great time to buy stuff for your home, stuff you need, stuff you don't need. But why on King's Day? It's not like the king is looking for a discount. Like, is the royal family really into this? I, I don't understand. Why is, it, why is this a thing? How did it even become a thing? And the next and final thing I wanna talk about today is why do Dutch folks always leave their curtains open? This, I really don't get because, I mean, of course I live in the city, but from time to time, I want my privacy. Now you would think, okay, maybe Dutch folks leave their curtains open or they don't have curtains, so they make sure to do all their private stuff in rooms and places of the house that other people can't see. False, absolutely not true. I have seen the funniest things happening behind people's windows, not behind their curtains, because they don't exist. Now, of course, many people do have curtains, so I find that this whole Dutch people don't have curtains stereotype is, I think I expected more of the no curtain nests here in the Netherlands, but they are curtains. And they also sometimes have these like little films that they put on the windows so you can't see inside. So of course some people do do that, but oftentimes they don't. And I for one love walking around and taking a nice peek into people's homes. I'm sorry. It's just, I can't resist. There are no curtains, so. But I really don't get this because sometimes I've seen the funniest things. One time I was walking near Fondel Park with a couple of friends, they were visiting. And I don't know if I told the story, but it's so funny that I feel like even if I have, I have to share it again. So I was walking near Fondel Park and I happened to just glance at someone's apartment. I mean, there are apartment buildings everywhere. So it wasn't like I picked a particular apartment. I just happened to turn my head and there I see this woman butt naked on the ground floor, ground floor apartment near Fondel Park in Amsterdam. This is a huge tourist destination. A lot of people are just passing by even if they're not tourists, but no, she just didn't care. She was there butt naked. I mean, she wasn't facing me, thankfully, because that would have been awkward, but she was just there butt naked. And then she was like, putting on some pants. And I mean, go, go her, like good for her, you know, body positivity and all that. But I was just a little taken aback because I don't think this would be something that I would Im immediately want the world to see. But hey, here in the Netherlands, anything can happen. So those were some things that I still wonder about after two and a half years of living in the Netherlands. Now, of course, as usual, if you have something to say about anything that I mentioned earlier, feel free to drop a comment down below. And of course, until next time.